Thank you for tuning in again. Listen, we have another great show uh, for a conversation with McGee, one of them that we did in the past, and I believe you're going to enjoy yourself. Not going to waste your time. Now, here's another one. Well, hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining in with the conversation with the McGee's. Uh, my wife or my daughter or my son are here today because today is new grandbaby day. Um, we're anticipating our new granddaughter, Blair Nova McGee, uh, to be born on today. And so we're really excited about that. And everybody's a little bit on edge. So, you know, I just decided to go this along on today. But we thank God for uh, the word that was preached earlier today uh, about trusting God in the dark. Uh, we were talking about the blind men actually trusting God in the dark. And blindness is nothing but darkness. That's all it is. It's nothing but darkness. And on today, I, I decided to invite a young man that um, is very dear to me, very dear to my heart. He's a, a, a husband. He's a father. He's an entrepreneur. Um, and, and he's an overcomer. He's an overcomer. Uh, he's really gone through a lot in his life. And um, and he's even gone through a vast amount of darkness in his life, but he overcame those things. So um, I wanted to invite him on here today. Won't you welcome back at Elder Darrell Hill. Thank you How so much, you, All right, we can't yeah, touch. Yeah, no, but... we can't touch. There we go. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, this young man has really been a blessing uh, to us on today. And first of all, I want you all to understand this. Y'all know we can't go to the barbershop. Now, he ain't got no hair. So no, I don't know no. why he got a hat on, but my, <laughs> my stuff is jacked up, you know. But um, on today, we just wanted to share um, with him on today. He has a, a great testimony. But before we do, I got this out of my office and I wanted to read it. It says, God. God, grant me the serenity to accept the thing that cannot change, to change the thing I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did the sinful world as it is not as I would have it. Trusting you will make all things right if I surrender to your will so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next life. You know, so uh, uh, um, this is so profound. Uh, some of my ministers bought it for me years ago, so I just wanted to uh, share that with you. But listen, let's get into our conversation. Elder Durrell, how are you today, sir? I am great, sir. How about you? I'm, I'm, I'm blessed, and I'm blessed to have you on our conversation today. So earlier today, I was preaching. Uh, it's been a series, a three-part series, Trusting God in Critical Time. And today, um, we were a little bit different. The first time we talked about the little boy with the deaf and dumb spirit. Then we talked about uh, the woman with the issue of blood. And so on today, we talked about the blind men. And, and blindness just means total darkness, total correct, darkness. Correct. And so um, I, I, I admire you. I acknowledge uh, 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 what God has done for you and what Amen. God has done in your life. Um, first of all, to just be honest and transparent, how has this uh, crisis that we're facing today, how has it affected you? How are you handling it? How are you dealing with it? Well, Bishop, first of all, thank you for this, Bishop, and this opportunity. Second of all, I haven't really let this pandemic change my thought process. Even when I was diagnosed with cancer and things of that nature, Bishop, I had to understand the fact is that 
God will not allow you to go through something without bringing you out of something. This situation has really made me take into perspective my relationship with God. Okay. The alone time, the, the not being able to go certain places, it really made me put in perspective my relationship with God. Okay. It's amazing that you was reading this, Bishop, and out of all of that, I got the part trusting you will make all things right if I surrender to your will. That's true. That's Letting true. go of my understanding of healing, my understanding of how I'm going to beat cancer, as you and I talked many times, and, and that's when God revealed to me that the real, it's about wholeness, it's not about healing. In my times of being incarcerated, because we've talked many times, and you write, darkness is not per se towards the eyes. Darkness is really a mind thing. And, and, and it really is. You know what? Now that you said that, I want to share uh, a quote with everybody. I'm kind of real big on quote. And um, that particular quote that I want to share, it says, sometimes there is no darker place than our thoughts the moonless midnight of the mind mm -hmm. when there's no moon uh there's no thought and sometimes that's the most darkest place mm -hmm. you know in, in our whole life and our whole body is in the mind mm -hmm. and so i think it's so imperative for us and i've been telling the people you know pray over your mind speak the blood of jesus mm -hmm. over your mind and lift your mind and keep your mind elevated and you know uh get some 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 good books and some good music and talk to yourself mm -hmm. speak over yourself declare some things speak and proclaim decree some things and just begin to talk Talk over your mind because that is the uh, the, 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 the the tower, the, 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 the strong tower that the enemy mm -hmm. tries to invade so he can get us down. If he can't get the mind, he can't get you. That's right. That's right. And the mind is, is everything through the times of my life, especially now. Keeping your mind directed in the right way. Because it's so easy for you to start listening to things on social media, listening to things on television that try to take your mind away from the direction God trying to take it. And that was my main thing, just keep your mind. If you can keep your mind, everything else will fall in place. Well, let me just ask you this now. Uh, there, there are three different situations that I want to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, let's go back. We won't. It's really not an issue of why you were incarcerated, mm -hmm. but how you handled the incarceration. And so I remember you telling me one time, um, what, what do you call that when you're in the room, isolated by Segregation. Yourself? Segregation. Mm -hmm. Okay, you told me that um, you were in there, it was no light. No light, no mm -hmm. clothes, no food. No nothing. They feed you three times a day, but they feed you through a chuck hole. And that's when you see a little light sometime, or if they they decide, which is not often, to turn the light on out in the hallway, then that's when you have the light just showing at the bottom of your door. Okay, so why do they take your clothes? Well, because people have known been known to use clothes to strangle themselves and okay. things of that nature, so they don't want to give you no the opportunity. Opportunity of suicide. Right. Or something correct. Like that. Correct. Okay. So you're in in this cell, oh. no light, no clothes. Mm -hmm. Barely fed, no communication, and I think the only thing you told me that you had was your Bible. That's it. Okay. That's it. I, I small, you know, uh, explanation of that, Bishop. You there without nothing other than your boxer underwear and nothing else. Okay. But every now and then, someone might be able to slide you a book or something under the door. One of the trustees and. I had been asking a guy to constantly send me an urban novel, but to show you the greatness of God and when God has a direction for you, nothing you want matters. I asked the guy for the urban novel and he you know, told me I'll try it. And as I sat in the corner in the dark, all of a sudden I heard a book slide under the door. And I'm thinking he sent me the urban novel and I go, and it's a Bible. Okay. And the funny part is, and I'm just being transparent and honest, Bishop, I tried to push the Bible back. I really tried to push it back on the door, but it wouldn't go. So I continued to question like, okay, well, if this Bible won't go, it's got to be a reason. And the only time that I was able to read it is when, like I said, they turned that light on outside and it's up under the door. And I would lay at the door and just put my face in the word of God.
So the only way you were able to see was through a crack in the door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, you decided to use it to study the Word of God and Correct. to read the Word of God, Correct. Uh, which is not really what you wanted to do from the beginning. Not at That's all. That's what you decided to do. Um, how, how did that, how did the uh, light of God's Word affect your darkness? It, Bishop, believe it, I promise you, that little light revealed the big light of God when I was able to open that word and start just focusing, it took me mentally and spiritually away from the four little corners of that eight by 10 cell. It totally took me away to where physically I was there, but spiritually and mentally I wasn't. Mm -hmm. As I continued to just keep my face, whenever that light came on, I sought that light more than I sought food back there. And this was an eight month period. Wow. So eight months of this, I really wanted to understand the word of God. So, because you were in darkness, mm -hmm. you seized the moment yes, sir. whenever the light came on. Whenever the light came on. Yes, sir. No matter what time of day, no matter what time of night. Didn't know the time anyway. All right, because you were in total darkness. Yes, sir. In total darkness. Mm -hmm. And so, you seized the moment whenever the light came on and you decided to use it to your benefit. Yes, sir. Yes, okay, sir. and so uh, this is so important, people of God, because we're living in a dark age, we're living in a dark time, and you know, uh, uh, we don't want to take for granted, you know, that everybody's fine and you know everybody's okay, and you know some people still have their jobs and some people are still working from home, but there are some people, you know, that 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 don't have that anymore. And you say, well, they could file for unemployment. Have you seen the unemployment line lately, really? You know, and people are still waiting on checks. You know, I'm still waiting on a stimulus check. And what is this? Is it May? Yes, this what, is already what? May. May something. <laughs> May, May 16th, you know. So, you know, I mean, I'm glad for those who are able, but, you know, my heart goes out to those people they have darkness around them in their mind. Now, now, honestly, Darrell, was it always easy? Was nope. it always easy in darkness? And all, it, was, it was extremely hard. Bishop, I'll be honest with you. In that time of being back there, you had over 20 guys commit suicide. Okay. Because it, it, if it's ever an understanding in your life of feeling alone in darkness, that type of situation will make you feel alone. It will bring you to a point where there's nothing to do but count the bricks on the wall over and over and over again to try to keep your mind. Because it's so easy to lose your mind in darkness. Okay, darkness is not easy. So now with the pandemic that we're facing right now, um, in a sense, it's not dark outside, but in your mind it's dark because those people that <coughs> have contracted it. They have to be isolated. Mm -hmm. They have to be by themselves. Oh, correct. You know, they really have to go it alone. Mm -hmm. They have to go it alone, you know, except the doctors and the nurses to do whatever they can. Have any visitors they can. Nobody can embrace them. Nobody correct. can hold them. So it's a form of darkness. Mm -hmm. It's a form of darkness. And, and I don't want uh, us to take that for granted. Um, I, I want to skip to another area. We may come back to that. Mm -hmm. uh, not only... Uh, were you incarcerated and you experienced darkness there? Um, you've been challenged with cancer. Yes, sir. You've been challenged with cancer, and that is another dark space. Yes, it is. Uh, another dark area of the mind. You know, nobody's trying to get it just so God can heal them. Yeah. You know, nobody's trying to get it so we can have a testimony, oh, I've been delivered. You know, um, Let's talk about that area of darkness for you and how uh, it affected you when you first became aware of the cancer that you had. It totally affected me, Bishop. Being a man that was constantly used to being on the move, 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 move. And when I was first diagnosed, it was the darkest place, of, darkest time probably of my life. Outside of segregation, outside of whatever. Because, excuse me. Uh, your mom had recently right, passed, passed away cancer. and died of cancer. And you are 
the only child. Yes, correct. You're the only, you're the only biological child. And, oh, I'm sure it just kind of took your mind back to her. Oh, yes. and, you know, things like that were going on. Yes, it took my mind back because I just, like you said, just, just lost my mom to cancer. And now here it is. I'm diagnosed with the same form of cancer. Okay. So it was a very trying, dark time because here it is. I'm, you know, trying to be an entrepreneur, trying to get my business run, everything starting to go. And all of a sudden, bam. Now you have cancer. Now your sales is not acting right. You got your bad sales, your good sales, your energy level is low. It was a very dark, trying time. But once again, it was just constantly talking to God about it and, and seeing, asking God to help my mind see it the right way. Okay. How important uh, was optimism during that time when you first discovered it. Mm -hmm. You know, because some people just try to play Superman, like, oh, you're coming out of this and you're coming out of that. You don't know what you're coming out of until you face with it or until you're in it. Oh, you know, God. and you fight yes. your way through it. Yes, you know, and so it's easy to say it me on the outside looking in. Mm -hmm. You know, but how important was optimism? How important was the word of God for you to hear when you were in that dark space and in that dark place in your mind? How, how? It was extremely important because at that dark place, you you can't help but because you basically equate cancer with death. Right. So it's hard for some people, but it was so important for me to seek God in a way that I've never sought God before. This is how he was able to reveal to me that son, wholeness is just as important as healing because I had to really say, okay, God, I'm not understanding this. I'm at a place, God, where I don't know if I can make it through this. But it was the word of God that continued to give me the strength to say, son, I brought you through segregation. I brought you through the streets of Chicago. I brought you through that. What makes you think I'm going to leave you now? You've been diagnosed with something, but God explained it to me, Bishop. People are diagnosed with the flu. People diagnosed with a cold. You diagnosed with many things. He said, okay, so what makes you see this so much different? Because the doctor said it. He said, don't let your mind go somewhere where I don't want it to go. Keep your mind focused and we'll deal with the illness, but keep your mind focused in this dark place. Well, the Bible does say in Isaiah that thou will keep him in perfect mm -hmm. peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Yes. Yes. So, so, so what I'm gathering out of, you know, our uh, collaboration today that that is so essential that you keep your mind yes healthy, yes. that you keep your mind focused, mm -hmm. you know, even during the dark areas of your life. Now, will you attest to the fact that sometimes it'll catch you off guard and you may get a little shaken or a little scared or a little concerned, but you got to like, pull yourself back together to get back, to regain your focus? Mm -hmm. Every chemotherapy treatment, Okay. You, you have to grasp your mind, like, hold up, okay. because your body is telling you one thing. Right. Right. But you, that's the most important time. You have to grasp yourself and say, hold up. Okay. You know, and, and like I said, scripture is so important. I, I constantly go to Job, though they slay me, yet still will I trust them. Okay. I have nothing but my trust in God. No matter what's going on in the physical, you still have to keep your mind fixed on God. Okay. No matter how dark the place, no matter what you're dealing with, yo, it's so important and essential that your mind stays fixed on God. Okay. Okay. Um, that 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 is so important. And one of the reasons I'm talking about this today is because, you know, there are so many people. You know, week by week is different. Uh, day by day is different. And you know, we're still in isolation and we're still being quarantined. And you know, um, people have their own different opinions about whether we should open up or whether we should remain isolated or whatever is, you know, it's really on you. Um, nobody can tell you what to do because it's your life that's at stake. You know, and so you have to do what's best, but even while we're uh, uh, in isolation and quarantined and, you know, uh, in the house and, you know, walking and, you know, trying to get exercise and things of that sort, sometimes the enemy attacks yes. your mind. Yes. Yes, regularly. Sometimes, I mean, and you could be isolated with somebody else in the house. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I don't know about you, but 
too much of the house gets on my nerve. Bishop, I, I, <laughs> okay, ooh. don't go to the other part now. Nah. Okay. Because we'll both get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, we, we're getting in trouble. Let's let that go. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. But too much of the house. Yes. You know, it yes. just kind of bothers you. Ooh. You know, it, it bothers you. And so uh, 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 my wife got me yesterday. Um, she says, you just... Make an excuse to just get out the house, to go to the store, to do whatever, whatever. You know, yeah. like burn up. Okay, come on now. You know, but um, no, it, it's not just that. It's like we don't have our freedom Ooh. anymore. Ooh. We, we don't have our freedom to <sighs> even go to a restaurant with your wife or you don't have the freedom to go to the movie or, mm-hmm. you know, you don't have the freedom to, uh, you know, uh, 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 just do a lot of social things, go to yes. dinner and, yes. you know, things like we don't have those freedoms anymore. Yes. So we have to really be intentional and mm-hmm. be creative mm-hmm. in the things we do that we might enjoy, you know, life and uh, my wife and I, we went on a couple of quarantine dates and it's just a drive, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. But it'd be different if it was a drive and we can get out and go to dinner. We got to drive there and drive back. Drive back, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, but I mean, it's still uh, 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 an awesome opportunity to still be able to be here to do that. Mm-hmm. You know, but sometimes it's just kind of get next to you, yes. you know, and it'll become a dark space. And um, there, there's one more thing that I wanted to uh, challenge you about. Mm-hmm. Um, you mentioned it today. Um, you've been incarcerated. You uh, witnessed darkness there. Uh, you're overcoming a, a, a situation with cancer in your life right now, so you have to constantly fight there. Yeah. And because of the pandemic, uh, or, or rather, you're also an entrepreneur. Yes, sir. You have your own business. Yes, sir. You know, and because of the pandemic, it's affected your business. Yes. Because of the pandemic, because of what you're going through with your health, and this is why I really made that, we, you know, we are a great distance from each other. Um, your challenge with these things and Especially when you have your chemotherapy session, mm-hmm. you can't work at all. No, no, that we. You know, this is your only source of income. Mm-hmm. The business that you're doing, by the way, if you need either great upholstery cleaner and uh, a carpet cleaner, you know, and if you ever want any information, I highly recommend him. But that. This pandemic has affected your livelihood. Yes. Your livelihood. Uh, Not just your job, uh, uh, not just your income, but your livelihood. livelihood. You know, and I was praying the other day, uh, Elder Durrell, and I I began to weep. You know, um, I'm thankful, you know, for those of us, those people that rather still have their jobs and things like that. But it seemed like, I think it was Thursday night, I was praying and I was telling somebody I've been doing with the old folks, used to, I've been getting on my knees. Yeah. You know, you know, we used to have a pillow under our knees and yeah. stuff like that. And so I've been going down on my knees and praying. I, I really begin to weep for uh, those businesses, those uh, uh, nail salons, those mm-hmm. hair salons, those uh, 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 mom and pop restaurants, yes. those bakeries, yes. those barbershops, those people that they didn't just lose income. They didn't just lose uh, uh, their business. They lost their livelihood. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, and, and, and I think uh, one that really got me, there was a couple, you know, they inherited a business from their parents and they had been in business over 70 years. Mm. 70 years. Mm. And they lost their livelihood with tears in their eyes streaming down. And, you know, I, I never want those people, you know, that are so blessed that, 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 that you know, they forget about those that it wasn't because they were lazy. At all. It wasn't because they were trifling. At all. You know, uh, 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 the pandemic just affected them and it lost their livelihood. So, uh, uh, how does that affect? affect you, uh, especially when you have to have your chemotherapy treatment, you can't do anything. Forget work. You, mm-hmm. you, your body is so drained. You can't 
do anything. And I know that's a dark place. Very. I know that's a dark place. How, how do you deal with that? That's the most challenging part, Bishop, to be honest with you, is when you go through that four to five days of your body not cooperating where you can't, you know, do something. It's, it's not even a matter of if people call for appointments, you still can't do it. Damn. That's the biggest challenge. You still can't do it because people do call. Because, you know, pandemic or whatever, you have people that still want their stuff done. But my biggest challenge in that dark space is the fact is when you physically can't do it. And you're so used to physically being active. That's the hardest challenge. But that's why I say intimacy in your relationship with God is most important. Because if you don't have it, it's no way to keep your mind in that. It's no way because when that's all you have is your business yeah. and it's taken away from you and even if it's not taken away from you physically you can't do it that dark space without God is crucial okay. it's crucial if you don't have no relationship with God in those dark places Bishop it become darker okay well, let me just ask you this no work no income mm -hmm. Has God proven himself to you in those times to make sure that your needs were met or your obligations were met? Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in a way that we don't have enough time. In a way that just to this day blows my mind. How I can go before God and be like, Dad, I gave this business to you. I asked you for it. You own it. I'm your employee, Father God. I mean, he just continues to answer prayer, answer prayer. Father God, how am I going to pay this bill? For some reason, some way, somehow, he'll have somebody reach out to me. Elder, I had you on my mind. You know, Darrell, man, brother was thinking about you. He's always came through. Okay. Always. Each, no bill has went unpaid. I've not went without food in my home. I've not went without gas in my car. I've still been able to. And, and the, the best part out of it all, Bishop, to be honest with you, even my doctor saying, how are you still holding 200, 205 pounds? He said, what are you doing? I said, well, to be honest with you, everything with me is prayer. I said, God makes it possible for me to force myself to eat, to keep my weight. God makes it possible for my mind to stay focused, to just believe that he's taking care of me in the streets. He's taking care of me in the penitentiary, that he's going to take care of me now. Without God, none of this is possible. Okay. None of this is possible for me to even be able to still exist in business, still exist in life, period. God is still making it happen for me. So, and, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that Elder Durrell came and shared with us on today. One of the things that, you know, I really wanted to speak to those of you all who are listening, God provide yes he does light or darkness mm -hmm. god provide in yeah. fact i want to share uh, a little video with you right quick we'll be right back after this god provides so why do i worry about my life when you come to my rescue without God provides in ways I can't explain and can't deny. The little that I have, He multiplies. Just when I feel He won't show up on time, God provides. He'll come through when the clouds of doubt bring down. Test everything you thought you knew. Now you finally see what God can do for you. So tonight, close your eyes, there's no more need to fight. Watch God provide. God provides 
It's hard to say when there's no food to eat Or what you feel that life will be And will this be another year of misery for me? Watch God provide. Hallelujah. And so that's what I wanted you to know. You know, uh, uh, Chamberlain Man singing that God provide. Yes, you know, and, and I want you to know, and, and I, I, I'm grateful for Elder Darrell Fields being here with us on today. Um, he, he knows what it is to be in, in certain areas of darkness that I yes. may not even know. To be and so what we really wanted to do is to encourage you, uh, to encourage you business owners, encourage you, you know, I know you can't, you know, three months with your shop closed is a long time. Yes, it is. <clears throat> It's a long time, you know, and it can make or break you. But I want you to know that if you just trust God, like the blind man said, Jesus, have mercy upon us. We don't deserve it. You know, it's, it's nothing that we could do to merit it. You know, God just have mercy upon us. And I guarantee you, just like God gave Elder Durrell light in his darkness through the word of God. Yes, Lord. Just like God gave him light in his darkness through overcoming cancer. Just like God has given him light in his darkness through his business. <clears throat> I want you to know that uh, God is going to do the same thing for you. Uh, I want you to be encouraged. I want you to know that uh, I believe it was Martin Luther King that said, stars can only shine when it's dark. You know, so when you can't see nothing else, you can see the stars. You can see uh, 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 the word of God, the, the power of God. You know, you can see God just making a way somehow out of no way and i want you to see yourself coming out of it Amen. i want you to be encouraged i want you to be lifted i want you to be inspired i want you to be motivated elder develfield thank you so much for sharing with us on today thank you Bishop. I, I pray that your testimony or your story and experience has been a help to somebody else in fact before we leave would you just say a prayer for those that might be experiencing darkness either in their health uh in their business in their marriage or just in their mind can you just say a prayer for them 
Father God, we just come to you right now, Father God, first and, forth, first, first and foremost acknowledging you as God. Father God, as we come before you, I would like to just intercede for someone that might be going through, Father God. Someone that's caught in, to, in between, Father God, of not understanding and understanding. I just pray, Father God, that you help not only their business, Father God, but help whatever turmoil that might be in their house, Father God. We ask that all strongholds be tore down in the mind, Father God. We ask that scripture continue to be fed into our life that be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind so we can know what the good and perfect acceptable will of God is Father God Father God I just ask that we can become more intimate with you that we can seek direction from you and not direction from man Father God I just ask right now in Jesus name that businesses can be reopened Father God that people's lives can be renewed and restored Father God but first and foremost Father God during this time of the pandemic I ask Father God that you can press us into opening your book and not Facebook that you can keep us focused Father God on you and knowing Father God that this too shall pass and we just say thank you right now thank you for the things that you have done in our past you're doing in our present but right now we profess and proclaim those great things that you're going to do in our future if it be your will and we just say thank you Father God thank you. I thank you for each and every member of Free Spirit Ministry Worship Center and any other Father God ministry of those that are worshipers and believers in you Father God I I pray that you continue to reveal to us that you are God alone that need help in nothing, Father God, that all things will be taken care of in a timely fashion when you say so and not man. And Dad, we just say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all that you will do and have done. And we just ask, Father God, that the blood of Jesus Christ continue to cover us, Father God, during this time. And we just say we love, honor, worship, and cherish you. And in Jesus' name we pray, man. Amen. Amen. Listen, thank you so much for joining us with a conversation with the McKees on today. Um, I appreciate all of you for tuning in, but would you just do me a favor? If you believe that what we shared on today, would you just comment and say, Jesus is my light. Jesus is my light. Just, just let it flow. Just speak it out. Jesus is my light. Listen, we love you. Again, thank you, Elder Durrell. We appreciate all of you. We'll see you next time. God bless you. God bless you.